Vinny Palumbo here with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review. Today's topic is going to be growth hormone. This is a uh, drug I get multiple questions about every single day from multiple people. People are confused by it. People think um, GH is actually a, a, a stronger anabolic steroid. And really, if we want to really differentiate, you know, anabolic steroids are steroidal compounds. You know, they're, they have a steroidal backbone. They're related to testosterone, whereas growth hormone is a peptide hormone. Okay? It's made from protein, and it has no masculinizing effects. It's produced in the pituitary gland. Um, the pituitary gland releases it naturally as we're growing. Obviously, we produce a lot more growth hormone. And uh, what growth hormone does, it doesn't really have a direct growing effect or muscle building effect. What it does is it indirectly stimulates the liver to produce a hormone known as IGF-1 or insulin growth factor or insulin-like growth factor 1, which will cause muscle hyperplasia, which is the production of new muscle cells. Uh, it will also you know, help the long bones to elongate and get bigger, you know, assuming you're in your growth years. You know, once, you're, once your, I guess, bone plates are closed, you're not going to get any more long bone growth, which means you're not going to grow in height. But muscle cells can grow, and obviously, when you when you break down muscle tissue in the gym, it's going to help with recovery. And uh, so, we bodybuilders love to take growth hormone. But if you took growth hormone alone and didn't take any other, you know, anabolic drugs with that, you probably would be greatly disappointed in, in, in the results you get from it because GH is not a big muscle builder. It, it produces new muscle cells, but it doesn't make the existing cells get larger, like steroids do. Anabolic steroids actually take your existing muscle cells and make them bigger, uh, especially if you break them down in the gym and, and subject them to, you know, the stresses of, of you know, training. So GH has a better effect when it's used synergistically with anabolic steroids. And we've noticed that over the years that when you combine steroids and GH, you get a better effect. And that's because the steroids are making your cells get bigger, but the GH is producing new muscle tissue. It's basically taking what we used to call satellite cells. Now we call them stem cells. Stem cells are just undifferentiated cells that sit around the muscle that you're training. And these cells have the potential to turn into, into the tissue that they're near or related to. So if you're breaking down muscle tissue and you're taking GH, which is causing IGF-1 release, some of those stem cells will turn into new muscle cells. And add it to your existing cells, you wouldn't even notice the, the difference because they're they're so small. And now when you train and work out and eat a lot of protein and take anabolic steroids, those new cells will get bigger. So they they work together. That's really how it goes. The, the, the questions though I have, however, I get are number one, how much should I take? When should I take it? And do I need to take insulin with it? Those are invariably the three most common questions. And, and they're good questions, you know. How much you can't look at what a child would take, you know, you know, who's trying to grow in height. That's not the right dosage to look at because the dosage needed to make the long bones grow is a lot higher than the dosage required to increase muscle mass. So it's a different dosage. And I think a lot of people make a mistake. They go in and they look up online what kids take, you know, to grow. And they say, oh, they're taking all these, they're taking, you know, 30 IUs a week. I got to do the same thing. But that's not necessarily, uh, or it's, you know, based on, you know, weight too. So if, when they extrapolate, that could be like 50, 60 IUs a week, you know, that an adult would take, but that's just not the right way to figure it out. We've figured it out over the years, you know, we've been doing, GH has been around for a long time now. So the ideal dosage is usually for women, it's anywhere from one to, to two IUs per day. And, 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 and people would say, well, why can't women take more GH? Well, you know, GH doesn't cause masculinizing side effects because it's not a it's not a steroidal compound, but it does make the facial bones grow. You know, the ears and the nose, you can get some growth from that. And, and in a man, you know, it might make him look a little tougher. In a woman, probably not going to do what she wants it to do to her face. It could make her face a little thicker looking, and a lot of women don't want that look, and it's not attractive, obviously. So you don't want to overdo the growth hormone as a woman, like I said, one to two I use per day is, is good. I, I see a lot of clients of mine using about a gram, uh, 1.5 I use per day. And that seems to be a nice sweet spot right there. And that and the good thing about that is it doesn't really cause too much insulin resistance. So you could take that GH and it's not going to affect your blood sugars. Now, men are going to want to use a little bit more. The, le the lowest effective dose where you're going to actually get growth 
and you're really not going to have many side effects is two IUs per day. And we used to take that back in the 90s because the GH was so expensive and you just couldn't afford to take more than that. And everyone got good results from it. So two IUs is effective. And, it's, and GH is more effective if you take it every day for longer periods of time as opposed to doing short cycles of a lot of it. You know, and, and that's just been proven. You know, when you take too much, you just get more side effects. You really don't get more growth. So the idea of being on it continuously is, is a much more appealing way to do it because you're going to get better results. Also, you got to remember that when you take a shot of exogenous growth hormone, okay, the liver can only respond and produce so much IGF-1 in response to the growth hormone injection. So if you take 30 IUs in one shot of, of GH, your liver is probably not going to produce any more IGF-1 than it would if you took, say, five or six IUs. And so you have to take that into account that there's, there's a waste factor. And then what you're just doing is making yourself more insulin resistant, more water retentive, you know, more pins and needles in your fingers. And, and you just keep creating more side effects. And that's the case with any drug. I mean, people people like to OD on on everything, right? I mean, if you, if you take, you know, 1,000 or... 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, you feel good. If you take 10,000 or 20,000, you might have a stomach ulcer, okay? So there's a diminishing returns. So I found that the ideal dosage is about two to five IUs per day of GH with probably four IUs being the sweet spot, meaning that you get the best benefits with the least side effects. Because once you start going over four IUs per day, you might get a little more growth, but you also get a lot more side effects. And what are the, some of these side effects? You know, fluid retention, obviously, pins and needles in the hands, they kind of fall asleep during the day. Um, you know, blood pressure can go up if obviously you're retaining a lot of fluid from the GH, which a lot of people do. And that's not good. But probably the most maybe harmful long term is, is the fact that the more growth hormone you put into your bloodstream, and GH can have an, a, an antagonistic effect to insulin, meaning that insulin can't do its job. Insulin's job is to take the sugar in the blood and push it into the cells, whether it be the muscle cells, the liver cells, the brain cells or the fat cells to produce, you know, to store as fat. That's its job. But if it can't get to the receptor because there's too much GH, which is antagonizing the effects of insulin, which means it's blocking in a sense to a certain degree, your body has to then produce more insulin. And what that does is it puts a tremendous strain on the pancreas. And if you're already eating an enormous amount of food as a bodybuilder, especially in the off season, and now you're creating more of a demand for your pancreas to produce insulin, what can happen is the beta cells, which produce insulin in the pancreas, can burn out. And that, that's not something you want to happen because then they don't work right. And then you don't absorb your food. And then you run high blood sugars. And then you get side effects from high blood sugars like eye damage, kidney damage, extremity damage. The blood vessels get gunked up with this glucose that's in the well, the excessive amount of glucose that's in the bloodstream. We don't want to do that. So we have to be smart. So like I said, three to four I use GH, probably the sweet spot, four I use being sweet spot. I usually use four I use with guys in the off season, three I use pre-contest. Plus it, it makes it a little more affordable too, because the stuff is expensive if you get real GH, that is. I mean, if you're buying fake GH and, <laughs> and you're getting a good deal on it, then you're really not getting any benefits out of it, even though you're, you're not spending as much money. So um, I do sell a growth hormone testing kit on daypalumba.com so you can test your growth hormone and see if it's real because i would say 50 percent of the stuff flowing around out there is, is is fake and don't don't believe or trust anything anyone says like i had a test you test it test it if you're going to spend and invest a couple thousand dollars in growth hormone you could spend another hundred bucks and test the gh and make sure that it, it it works because it's real and, you know and that's important but getting back to the insulin question is do you need insulin well the question is what are your blood sugars a lot of people just knee jerk start doing things and they don't even know what the data is. You know, so go to Walmart. If you don't live in the United States and you don't have Walmart, you can find a comparable store. But Walmart in the United States sells blood testing kits or blood glucometers for like nine bucks. Maybe it's up to ten dollars now. They're really cheap. And you got to get the test strips to go with that particular glucose monitor. And you can test your blood sugar every morning. And that's called your fasting blood sugar before you eat anything. And fasting blood sugar should be under 90. Okay. I know if you go for blood, blood work, it says that they need to be under 100, but that's that's like for people who don't want to be super healthy, okay? You want to be under 90 on a regular basis. And if you're running high blood sugars that are in the 90s or even in the 100s, which I, I see a lot of people on a regular basis running fasting blood sugars, 110, 105, those are, those are too high. That means your body's not managing its blood sugar properly. And it could be because you're on GH. It could just be that you're eating a lot of food and your body can't keep up with the, with the insulin production. 
And there's two negatives because of that. Number one, you're not absorbing your food properly, okay, which is going to inhibit growth in a sense. And I noticed that when I used to use GH back in the day, I couldn't gain any weight. I would be ripped, but I couldn't gain weight. And I realized that, and I didn't even, we didn't have glucometers back then. No one had, only type one diabetics had them. And I didn't even know how to, I wouldn't even know what to do with them, to be honest with you. But I did notice that when I put in a, some insulin into my protocol, I was, I started gaining weight again. I didn't use a lot, but I was using enough to help my body absorb the food. And I was eating an enormous amount of food back in the day because I had a very fast metabolism. So nowadays, we can quantify what's going on. Get a blood sugar monitor, and you basically just test your blood sugar every morning. And you know, if your blood sugar is in the right range, then you're good. If you're under 90, if you're not, you're running 96, 98, you might want to think about getting a what we call a long-acting or basal insulin. These insulins are basically made... They're not like the insulin you think of. I take a shot. Oh, if I don't eat, I'm going to go low blood sugar. No, these are long acting insulins that work in the background. What it basically does is it takes the burden off your pancreas, off your beta cells, having to produce so much insulin during the day, and it gives them a rest in a sense. So instead of you, and I'm just going to give you like a, a fictitious number. Let's say your pancreas produces 200 units of insulin a day. Okay. And now you're taking growth hormone and you're eating more food because you're bulking up. And now it needs to produce 300, but it's only really capable of producing 200, maybe 250. So now there's 50 units, it, it's short. So now you're going to start running high blood sugars. Now, if you take a long acting insulin, maybe 50 units you know, per day, 25 in the morning, 25 at night, and I'm just giving you, for instance, that these are not real numbers. Now you've helped the pancreas produce what it's missing. And so now it's going to still produce its 250, but now you, it has the, the 50 that you've taken extra on top of that. And now it's, now your blood sugars are back to normal because the pancreas can handle that load. And that's what, that's what long acting insulins are all about. And I'm going to do another video on insulin uh, with my, um, my insulin guru, as I call her, Colette Nelson in the coming, probably next week, we're going to do uh, an updated insulin video because there's a lot of new insulins out that a lot of people don't even know about. So Right now, I think that the best long-acting insulin on the market, and she would probably agree with me, is, is Trisheba, but it's also the most expensive and hardest to get. So a lot of people use other insulins like uh, Tujejo is, is very close to Trisheba, Lantus, but these insulins need to be taken twice a day, even though the doctors will say they're 24-hour insulins, they're really not. So you need to take them at night and in the morning, and depending on you know your size and how much you 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 know how big you are and how much you're eating, that will dictate how much insulin your body needs. And we're going to do a separate video on insulin. I'm not going to really talk about insulin here, but I will say the Trisheba is a true 24-hour insulin. You can take it once a day. And usually I tell people to start out with about 10 IUs a day and just see how your body does on that. If your blood sugars are still running high, you, you up it by like two IUs a day until you kind of get into that range where you get it down under 90. And this is, once again, just helping your body. It's not a performance enhancer, You although you might get some muscle growth from it because now you're restoring your normal uh, blood sugar balance in your body because you're actually absorbing all the, all the food you're eating. So you will get a little surge and in, in possibly muscle growth, but it's not the insulin that's giving you the growth. It's the, it's restoring the insulin balance. And remember the more GH you take, the more insulin you're probably going to need to take as well because it counteracts it. So you don't want to take too much insulin where you're putting too much of it. Excuse me, you don't want to take too much growth hormone. We're going to put too much of a strain on the body and you're going to have to take too much insulin because excessive insulin is not good either because even though long acting insulins don't really result in fat gain, like short acting ones do, you never want to have to take extra insulin above and beyond what you're doing. So it's all about the right balance. So if you're looking to put some muscle size on, you have the funds to do it and you have a source of real growth hormone. Ideally, four IUs per day is probably the sweet spot um, in an off-season scenario. Probably two IUs in the morning and two IUs maybe for six hours later. Now, why take it early in the morning? Because your body doesn't naturally produce GH in the morning. So why would you do that? Well, that's the exact reason why. Because your body isn't producing it in the morning. It does produce it at night, and it does produce it after you train. So you don't want to take it those times because your body's naturally releasing it those times. Your body is the most catabolic in the morning, meaning you produce the most catabolic hormones like cortisol in the morning uh, hours. So if you can take some growth hormone and counteract some of that uh, catabolicness or catabolism that's going on in your body, then you're obviously going to get a better growth effect. Another thing people don't realize is that it doesn't matter what you're eating or not eating when you take your GH shot because you're not trying to stimulate growth hormone release. 
what you're trying to do is you're actually taking the growth hormone. So a lot of people get confused. Well, GH is naturally released in your body in a low carb environment. So I better not eat any carbs. Well, you're not trying to induce GH release. You're taking the growth hormone itself. So it doesn't really matter what you're eating or not eating. Matter of fact, when you first take GH, you do get a blood sugar drop initially because when you get that IGF-1 release from the liver, that has an insulin-like effect and it drives nutrients into the cells and that can sometimes lower your blood sugar. So you got to be careful. I always tell people to take the growth hormone when you're eating. So take a shot, eat your breakfast. You know, Don't take a shot and then go do cardio first thing in the morning. Do your cardio first, then take your shot and eat breakfast. And that's a smarter way to go. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of questions around insulin. What's the, I mean, around growth hormone, what's the best growth hormone? Well, the best growth hormone is real growth hormone. <laughs> if you have a real growth hormone that's truly dosed, they're all the same because GH is GH. It's the same 191 amino acids sequence. Um, anything that's pharmaceutical, obviously, is going to be better quality, you know, but there are pharmaceutical fakes too. There's Serono makes Serostim. There's Genentech makes Nootropin. Uh, Eli Lilly, I believe, still makes uh, Humatrope. And then there's Nordotropin over in Europe and Gentropin. And there's, 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 a, there's a lot of different ones out there. And then you got your generics that come from, you know, from China. And, and some of them are good and some of them are not. But test them, number one, to make sure they're real. But even if they're real, they could be underdosed. So that's something you have to consider it. But if you're getting a tremendous, tremendously cheap price on something compared to what a pharmaceutical price would be, you might want to opt for that as long as it, it tests out that it's real. However, on the other side of the coin, you might want to stick with the pharmaceutical grade and just use less. All right, you know what? It's a lot more expensive, but at least you know it's real. So two I use is really two I use. I can justify using two I use every day of pharmaceutical GH because at least I know I'm getting real growth hormone. And so... I think if I was, you know, competing and taking growth hormone in, in this day and age, I probably would go with the pharmaceutical grade, spend the extra money, but just use a little less of it. Um, because you could be taking Chinese GH to test positive for being real GH, but, you know, you might think you're taking six IUs and you might be taking one IU. You don't know. So I don't, I don't like that. I always like to know everything. You know, I don't, I don't like to be in the dark about what's going on because here you are thinking you're taking a nice healthy GH dose and you could be taking nothing. So it's something to think about. Hopefully this video helped clarify a couple of these questions and points. Once again, I get these on a daily basis from multiple people. So I felt it was important to put out a video explaining exactly, you know, how this uh, growth hormone works, um, what the right dosage is, and when the right time to take it is. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review.